We all remember that one game where we opened with that one Pokemon we absolutely did not want to start with. Well, today in episode 2 of Pokemath, we're going to be dealing with when a loan that in a GX in your opening hand ruins your game. So hello and welcome again to episode 2 of Pokemath, where we today are going to look at when starting with a Lone Dead Energy X ruins your game. So I always want to make this episode because we all had those going games where we opened that one Pokemon we absolutely did not want to, and we always blame, well, that's the reason why we lost this game, blah, 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 blah. So for today's motivation, we are indeed just looking at what is the probability to start with that basic U do not really want to start with, right? So, well, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So how are we gonna do it? Well, we, in the last episode, from which if you two can do its magic, there should be a link somewhere up here. Then we looked at the hypergeometric distribution, which is basically was the distribution where you draw without replacement. So when you draw from the deck of cards, you draw the first card. Well, you don't put the card back, so we draw again, hence without replacement. That's the formula we introduced here. And yes, it looks a little um, difficult for most, but what I did to help people was that we try to translate into a more, um, say, a Pokemon friendly version of the same, right? So you can see it as this, it takes as inputs the number of basics from the last episode. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the number of cards of the ones you want, say the energy X or do not want, and X being the number of the desired amount you wish to hit, we have the deck size, we have the cards drawn, and that's basically all the input it takes. So if you do not really understand how the hypergeometric distribution works, well, you might catch it in this episode, otherwise just watch episode one and hopefully it should become clear to you. So how are we gonna go exactly about this? Well, let's try it out. So we have been on the internet and we started by net decking towards Dragapult list. So that's the one he won the Limitless Invitational with, right? So in that deck, he plays 12 basic Pokemon, and he plays one that in a GX. And then what we, what we really want to figure out here is that what is the probability you open with just that one that in a GX, and that pretty much ruins your game most of the time. At least that's probably your worst starter in the deck. So just for example, he plays the following basic Pokemon in this deck. We have all the Dragapults, we have some nice Jirachis, we have the six Sakoons, we have one Giratina and one Dedenne popping in. You might say Giratina is a very bad starter too, but you could scoop up that, that one, so I still take the GX as the absolute worst one, okay? So we're looking at what is the probability indeed you start with that stupid Dedenne GX right there. It looks cute, but it's annoying at times. However, in order to accomplish that, we have to do this in several steps. So please bear over with me when I'm gonna do what is seemingly a lot of random steps, but I'll try to put them together at the end to make everything clear to you, okay? So let's start. The first step we're gonna be looking at is just the probability of drawing the Dene by itself. What I mean is, what is the probability when we draw our opening seven cards that the Dene is among those seven cards? We're not thinking about any other basics now, we're just thinking about the Dene. And here, I directly just apply the hypergeometric distribution that we had from the previous episode. There's one Dedenne in deck. We wish to draw one, or that's the amount. There's 60 cards in the deck, minus one, that's the Dedenne. And we draw seven minus one, because that's the Dedenne again, over 67. Which, just to give you a quick example of how this works, for instance, take the 60 over seven. You have a pool of 60 distinct objects, your 60 cards in your deck, and you're drawing seven from that pool without replacement. Indeed, so you draw off size seven, you draw seven at a time. Using this formula here, we get 11.67%. So that's the chance of the Dene GX being in your opening seven cards. This doesn't tell you the probability of there being another basic next to it, and that's what we're gonna be doing in step number two. So remember, step one, we looked at what's the probability of drawing the Dene in your opening hand. Okay, let's go to step number two where we draw no other basics. And here I'm using a table again from episode one, so please do check that if this is not clear to you. We calculated what is the probability of starting with exactly one, exactly two, three, four, five, and six. Then you might think, hmm, why do I stop only at six, why not seven? Well, remember, we're now assuming that the Dene GX is in your hand, right? So that's the first card you draw, say. 
That means we have six other cards. We have to figure out them not to be basics. But then if you think a little quicker, you might be why you didn't calculating the probability of actually hitting stuff. Well, that's because to calculate the probability of not hitting it, we can just calculate the probability of hitting it and then one minus that, showing it like this. So we take, we draw six cards from the deck now because the seventh one was already the Denny. The deck size is now 59 cards and there's 11 other basics in your deck. These are the inputs. These X's here corresponds to one through six. And these are the different probabilities that we draw this many basics. Remember, this doesn't really mean zero. Actually, there's something on the fifth decimal, but it just means that it's, well, very, very small. I only do it to the fourth decimal. We sum up all these probabilities. So in other words, to draw at least one or more, so at least one, is 72.76%. And then we can just flip that around because we are interested in so showing how much we will not be hitting other basics. Then we just do one minus that. That yields 27.24%. So now we have two things now. We have the probability of just drawing the den in your seven cards. And we have now the probability of not drawing other basics. And now we can take those two results and put them together, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing in step three. And there we are simply just trying to figure out drawing only the den. And here we need to take in some help for probability theory, right? So please bear with me trying to make this um, digestible for you guys. So what does this actually mean we see here on line two? We see the probability of an event A, that is, for instance, in our case, just drawing the Dene, intersected with the probability of, so the intersected with event B, which is not drawing any other basics. And because we regard those two events as independent, that is, they don't influence each other, just because we drew the Dene in the first card doesn't influence the probability of us hitting other bases in our deck. That doesn't work like that. They're independent events. Therefore, we can just multiply the probability of those two independent events. And then we get the, well, in this case, the probability of drawing only the Dene GX. I've also done you guys the favor of actually translating this into a little more, um, you know, manageable thing here. So we change here to say the probability of Dene together with drawing no basics, so that means B complement, because B here will stand for basic, complement being no basics, so the, the opposite, which is just the same as multiplying the two events. And that's what we have down here, right? Drawing to the NGX in opening hand, that was step one. Multiply with drawing no other basics, which was step two. Now take those two results, and that gives us together 3.18%. And that was it, guys. Thank you for watching this episode. Roll in credits. Wait, that would have been easy, right? That would have been uh, way too easy. Then I could have made like 15,000 episodes with these small results. No, 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 no. We're not there yet because there's one other thing you have to take into account here. And that is, what about mulligans? So you see here, now this up here changed again because I'm actually changed this again because now in order to take into account for mulligans, we have to make a small distinction. You see, I added a one up here. One, 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 one. It means the same thing as before, with the exception this means now for your first draw, right? So assuming you have no mulligans and you just drew. So those were your first draw. So this will give you the probability of drawing only the DNA in the first draw. So not considering any mulligans. So now we have to add a couple more steps in order to take mulligans into account, okay? So without taking mulligans into account, it's 3.18%. Now let's add mulligans into this to see how that's if that affects our probability of starting low to Dene. First, we have to figure out, well, how often do you mulligan even with this deck, right? So we apply some magic from previous episode there. So here we see using the same formula from the hypergeometric distribution, we do not want to hit anything. We're drawing seven at a time still, right? Seven cards from our opening from a 60 card deck, and there was 12 basics in this towards deck that we net decked here for this, right? Using the formula gives us 19.06% of hitting a mulligan. So, right? So now we, well, we need to take this into account now, and this might be tricky actually, because this is not it. You would just think, but I can just times these this probability now with the one I got before and then get an infinitely small number, but that's not how it works. 
Actually, I can tell you that the result is going to be higher than this 3.18% we had earlier. And the way we're going to do that is that we're going to take a step back and then think about what are we actually looking for. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the overall probability of opening the Dene with no other basics. That's what this means. But what is that the same as? That's the same as in our first draw, not having or having a Dene with no other basics, the first draw, so without mulligan, plus the probability of a mulligan, which is this here, multiplied by with basically the same thing again. Well, why the same thing again? Because remember, if I get a mulligan, then basically everything resets and I'm going to draw again. So this could actually be represented as an infinite series, but you will see if you write it up, that this is basically just the same as multiplying with the same thing here again. So now we have the same here as there. But that doesn't really bring us to the result yet, does it? No. We have to be able to model this result a little bit in order to get what we want, which is a digestible expression for, well, what's the probability of actually opening long the and that screws our game over, right? So in order to do this, we're going to conduct a little magic experiment here, right? So this is what other people call math, but some people here like, well, here went to Hogwarts for like five years to figure out how this is done. So we apply some magic, which will be done with a little help from this guy. And now let's see what we can transform this into. It's not basically just using high school math here, but uh, well, for some people it's still magic and honestly sometimes still magic to me. So <laughs> let's keep it going. Let's see what it does for us. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, pretty. Oh, nice. We're almost there. And voila. This is what we can rewrite this expression to. And now if you take a moment to look at that, you'll be like, but we already know some of these things, right? We know what the probability of the mulligan is. We calculate that already. And we also just calculate in step three what the probability of this up here was. So we actually have all the inputs we need in order to calculate the overall probability. Hmm, cool. So let's just, you know, plug that in. So using this together, we put in the 3.18% we calculate in step three, one minus the probability of mulligan, which was from step four. And this now gives us 3.93%. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the final result here. The probability of starting loan de Dene taking into account mulligans as well. And as you can see, it's slightly higher than the 3.18%. And that makes perfect sense because every time you hit a mulligan, you basically get a new chance or risk, depending whether you how you look at it, right, to start loan de Dene over again. So if you would net decks towards deck here, you will in approximately one out of 25 games be screwed over by starting with loan at NA. That's basically it, right? So summing up, what did we learn today? We learned that again, we can use the hypergeometric distribution to calculate the probability of start with loan at NA. And we can also do that with or without controlling for mulligans. Because remember, step three was just without mulligans. And now with step five, we get controlling for mulligans. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was all I had to bring for you today. Hey guys, thanks for watching my second episode here of Pokemath. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please don't forget to, well, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. If you have any ideas or input or just want to say like, hey, this is nice, or you have some comments for improvement, I'll be happy to hear all of it. And well, in the meantime, until next time, well, we're going to be looking at the surprises of prices. So until then.